Hi, this is Jimmy. Who's this? Hi, Jimmy. This is David Axelrod. How are you? <laughs> Well, I'm fine, Mr. Axelrod. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, to what do I owe this privilege? Well, I was wondering if I could use your online platform, you know, access to your fans to promote this project <laughs> that we have going on right now. <laughs> you mean the thing with Carl Rove? Exactly the thing with Carl Rove. You got it. <laughs> what is that again? Well, this may be indicative of that old adage that uh, politics makes strange <laughs> bedfellows, and I suppose that is true. To <laughs> I suppose that is true to a certain extent. <laughs> But Carl and I really do have a lot in common, so we decided to join forces, as it were, and teach this master class in politics for the uh, the master class series. And we have been traveling around together doing speaking engagements and uh, really cleaning up money-wise, I have to say. I see, I see. It would seem that the guy who got Bush elected and the guy who got Obama elected wouldn't have a whole lot in common. You would think that, yes, but the truth <laughs> is that we do, actually. You know, in 2008, we tried to run a very positive campaign with a very positive message, and that really resonated with younger voters and galvanized them into sort of a movement. When Carl Rove ran the Bush campaigns, he ran on a lot of fear and marginalizing LGBT people and resentment. And then older people came out in droves for Bush. And my point is, those two <laughs> strategies are really two sides of the same coin. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that is incredibly cynical. What? I mean, they were both winning strategies. You don't have to agree with someone's political philosophy uh, to respect their game, as it were, when it comes to what it takes to win an election in this crazy world of politics. <laughs> okay. I mean, both of us took advantage of our respective sides in a way. On, on our side, the Obama side, our advantage was that young people, first-time voters, don't know that a politician that they like is lying to them. Once people are a little longer in the tooth, they know the candidates who are running for president will make promises that they can't or won't keep. But young people thought that Obama meant it when he said he was going to end all these wars, <laughs> which, of course, was not tethered to any kind of policy initiative or strategy that the Obama administration actually had. Right. But the Republican advantage on the other side is similar to that. <laughs> old people are really gullible. And the Republicans <laughs> have all the old people. And they can be lied to and duped just like young, naive liberal voters. So the trick is figuring out how to weaponize <laughs> the stupidity of your own base against your political opponent. So that's what this is? Just two political hacks talking about how to lie to people? Well, I mean, if that's the spin you want to put on it, fine, <laughs> but that's not how we're thinking about this experience. I just, we're talking with David Axelrod, uh, <laughs> former Obama <laughs> Advisor David, so who is coming to these talks and taking the master class? Do you, do you have any idea the types of people who are seeking your guidance? Well, you know, Jimmy, it turns out there's a lot of far right and old right type people. Really? Yes, because they have a very specific challenge, which is to try and make their political positions, be it white supremacy, whatever it is, to try and make them mainstream, mainline them, as we say. <laughs> and it's a particularly challenging thing that a politician has to do. And honestly, it's a very fascinating <laughs> case study from a political science perspective. 
and I like challenges. <laughs> so you're helping Nazis. I mean, if you want to put that kind of spin on it, that's fine. But just know <laughs> that that's not how Carl and I look at it. All we're doing is sharing our expertise with people who want to understand politics better, whether or not they want to use politics to affect a, a white ethno state in the Pacific Northwest. That's not my concern or problem. But Nazis? We get nowhere as a country unless we're civil with each other. We must maintain civility. Okay, thanks for calling, David Axelrod. Okay, I'm going to go count my money. <laughs> <laughs> Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice when we drop a video. Thanks for your support.